All right, the big question now, if police find Brian Laundrie alive, what's going to happen to him? Could he face charges? What about his parents? Could they face charges? Here with me now in studio, attorney and outnumbered co-host, the one and only Emily Campagno. Um, so I know that you have been covering this case. <laughs> I know that uh, you are not only um, someone who's very interested in true crime, uh, you are also an attorney. So obviously you have uh, an extra layer of expertise here. So what can we find when we get the autopsy reports? What are you expecting that to change the case. So here we're we hopefully will learn the manner of death and the cause of death, which is what you referenced with Ted earlier, right? Yep. So manner being accidental, mm -hmm. homicide, natural, and the like, and then the actual cause of death. Hopefully this autopsy will produce results rather than more questions. I think, frankly, the overarching themes that I'm seeing here of this particular case include the, the jurisdictional tension between federal and local law enforcement. Yes. I think that is something was there not enough communication? That's a great point. Because as we were watching this unfold and as we were watching the case kind of fall apart in slow motion, I was wondering, where's the FBI? So why was there such a disconnect between the FBI, who has all these incredible resources? You know, you've got at least three states involved in a potential homicide. Now, what appears to be an actual homicide. And then you've got two police departments screwing it up. So what does that tell you? I'll say this, as a former federal attorney, I don't want to disparage the Fed, even though I do pretty much every day, but generally speaking, it's usually because there is a dearth of communication or of evidence. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, you have the local police coming out and saying, what were we supposed to do, right? That was, this was, a missing persons occurred states away. We didn't have anything to go on here. Like, we are looking at hindsight 2020 and the sort of overlay as well of, of internet and social media yeah. and the like, but technically speaking, of all the reform everyone talks about and, and holding these law enforcement enforcement individuals to the straitjackets of their procedural requirements, there was nothing they could have done, right? So that's one angle. The second is to your point. Yeah, I mean, why because that, that's a really good point, because if this was a missing persons case and she did show up, if there had been that kind of overreach where they had, you know, 50 cars and 75 agents swarm into the house, that would have been overreach. And then we would have been critical of that. I understand that. But, you know, ha have they been able to access the metadata and some of the electronic data that's that's in the cloud that could tell them where she was, when they parted, who had her phone, when the last communication was, and, and that kind of stuff? So we know that they have uh, obtained all of those computers and cell phones and everything from the van. We know that that's why as well um, that they were able to see even more fishy communications from her. So we saw her no service in Yosemite or the, the alleged text from her, right? That was likely not from her. Yep. Uh, we also now have a text where she referenced her grandfather calling him by his first name as Stan, which was highly unusual as well. So this it's uncovering the tip of the iceberg. I think another thing to point out as well is that this timeline that we've been given yeah. by Laundry's parents is likely not true, or at least there's nothing that supports that at that moment. Mm -hmm. He was likely long gone, so much long ago. And keep in mind, too, that in that area in Florida right now, the temperatures are basically in the hundreds. No one's hiking. Yeah. No one's going outside. No one's going to the reserve. So this entire story that they put forth that, oh, if he If they're lying his on his behalf, I want to see them in handcuffs because he is the worst boyfriend everyone has ever had. Mm -hmm. And there's so much anger and vitriol. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's had a daughter who's dated a dirtbag, they're looking for him. They cannot wait to turn this guy into cops. Emily Campagno, thank you so much. Please come back so we can talk about this again. Thank you. Love I it. Will.